Welcome to part two of nuclear modular reactors. In this video, we will focus on reactor cores, cooling, and finally starting the reactor. If you haven't seen the previous video, please watch that first, as that covers the foundations and basics of the nuclear reactor. At this point, if we wanted to, we could turn this thing on and have it run for a period of time. But just to keep this thing cool, because this thing will heat up pretty quickly, we really need to have some cooling and some additional cooling through the reactor shielding. Now, it is common misconception that the reactor shielding will prevent radiation from from being emitted from this but all it is is just extra cooling that's it so it's got two different types of cooling built into this and technically you don't need cooling to make this reactor run but you won't be able to generate as much power or as much steam as you want if you don't so let me go ahead and do one last thing I want to grab this container because this thing is gonna need to dump the expended reactors and we're gonna do it through here here we go so as these reactor cores get used up it's going to dump the spent reactor cores the advanced reactor casings these guys right here we're gonna go ahead and start this up before we do anything else I want to show you what happens when you don't have the reactor shielding or the reactor cooling engaged. So the startup process is going to be, I don't know, it's going to be kind of fun. So before we can actually turn this on, we have to select in the IO modules here what we want this reactor to do. Do we want it to generate power or do we want it to generate steam? Or do we want it to do both? So for this tutorial, for right now, we're just gonna generate power. You have to select one of these two in order for the reactor to turn on. If you don't, the reactor will not turn on and you're gonna be like pulling out your hair. It's gonna be really frustrating. So we're selecting power out. We're gonna go into management. We're gonna turn every single one of these reactors on. Once all the lights turn green, we can go ahead and lock them in position. And then we can charge it. All right, so we're locking it. It's locked in position. It shows that we have fuel, that all of them are in position, and we have the minimum 100 megawatts of power required to charge this up and start it. So. We're gonna go ahead and click and hold the prime charge button to start this up. Oh, look at that, we don't have enough power. Okay, so we're gonna stop right here. This is not enough power apparently. So let's go ahead and put another one of these. I bet that my, I bet these things use up a lot of power. That's what I'm betting what those were. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and have to restart this. Turn it back on. And I just realized that this thing will not start until we put this in the start position. So if you were to try to start this up right now, it won't start up. All right, we're fully charged. And if you click this right now, this is me clicking. Nothing's gonna happen. That's because we forgot to put this into start mode. So we come down here, click somewhere around the bottom. And so this is our first reactor. We can have up to five reactors, which I'll show you. This is our first reactor. The way this works is you have a slider bar right there. See that? We take this and we need to put it in the start position. So this is start, this is run, this is safely overclocking, this is overload, and this is the danger zone. Okay, so in order to start this, 
we have to make sure that this is in the start menu. So let me go ahead and show you or explain to you what each one of these icons means. So if we start here in the bottom right hand corner, we have water. We're full, check. We have fuel. The fuel is the DT reactor cores. We're full, check. The one on the left is coolant. We have plenty of coolant, check. Now our power is in red. Now that's not the power that's coming in. That's the power that is generating. Since our reactor is off right now, it's not going to generate any power whatsoever until we start it up. Top left hand corner is temperature. This is probably the most important thing you should keep an eye on because we want to keep our temperature steady. You can have it uh, as cold as you want. You can have it warm or as hot as you want. But if it gets too high, it gets too hot, it will shut down. And then you'll have to restart it. But in order to restart it, you have to wait for it to cool down and it takes a long time to cool down. So keep an eye on this until you've got it stable, okay? And then this is the amount of steam that is stored inside your reactor. So if you're generating steam and you're not dissipating it into a pipe to use somewhere else, this will slowly build up and if it reaches critical, it will shut down the reactor to prevent it from blowing up. Recap again, water, fuel, coolant, power generated, steam capacity, and temperature, okay? Now, once this thing is started, this slider will automatically go up to 100%. So that's what this means. So we have 0%. 25% anywhere between 0 and 25 is required to start it 50 100 150 200 now without any kind of cooling or shielding this thing will not be able to run above 100% and I'll show you that so it'll be in your best interest to add shielding and to add cooling blocks to this, which we'll show you later. All right, so let's go and put it down to start. And then we're gonna make sure it's charged. It still is charged, that's fantastic. Let's start her up, ready? Three, two, one. <clears throat> Sorry about that. All right. So, right here, in the I.O. modules, it says starting. Once it's started, it'll start using up the reactor cores. It does take a while to start up. I think it's something like 30 seconds, maybe? There we go. Okay, we are consuming. We're using 4 cubic meters of water a minute, and 5 cubic meters of coolant a minute. And if you look here, we are at 100%. Let's see how much power we're generating. We are generating 5,300 megawatts of power for just this single reactor. We can do more reactors, which we will show you in just a few minutes. But right now, we're focused. We have 5,300 megawatts of power this thing is running at 100% and if you notice the temperature indicator is slowly increasing we can if we wanted to put this at 150% which I'm gonna do we won't be able to stay there for very long because at 150% it's gonna get hot fast so as you can see right here it's going up, but at 150%, we're generating more power. We're generating 7,800 megawatts of power, which is great. But the problem is, is without any kind of shielding or cooling systems, this thing is going to get hot fast. See that right there? 
And when you increase the percentage, it also increases how much coolant you're going to use. We're at 41. How much water you're going to use. We're at 31 right now. And this is also important. These numbers right here are critically important. So it's showing that we're generating 7,500 megawatts of power. Let's verify that that is correct. Oh, wow. Oh, I know why this is more. Hold on, let me disconnect this. All right, so it's now disconnected from any other power. There it is. We're generating 7,500 megawatts of power. Let's go back to the modules. And this is saying that each reactor core, it takes 40 seconds to burn it. Now, this is also important. I gotta show you this. The higher you put this, this lever, like if you were to go 200 or 250%, the faster, whoops, the faster it's gonna go through this reactor cores. So, if you don't wanna use that much, you can put it down to say seven. Blah, blah, blah. You can put it down to 50%, and then go back to uh, I/O modules, and then it'll take 120 seconds to burn through that reactor core. Now this last number is critically important. Okay, so right now it's at 71.4% of 100%. So if this number right here is below 100%, that means that the reactor is going to start to cool down. If it's at 100%, then it's going to maintain that temperature at whatever it is right now. So if you have, for example, if you have the temperature instead of right here, you got it like way up here, it will maintain that really hot temperature right where it's at and I'll explain why that could be useful later okay so right now we're below 100% okay so that reactor is gonna start to cool down okay it was about up here it's now slowly cooling down if this number is above 100% that means the reactor is gonna get hot let me show you here Okay, so we were at, what were we at? I think we were at 150%, okay? So at 150%, I keep getting confused, 150%, once this finishes consuming this core, this will update right here. So this takes a minute or two to update, but this is in real time, so this will start going up very quickly. There we go, okay. So we're above 100%. So we are at 214% heat generation. So we're gonna be generating heat very quickly. It's gonna take 40 seconds to go through one of those reactor cores, generating 7,500 megawatts of power. And this guy is already gonna start to go up. You might ask what happens if we go to the max temperature, well, let's find out. We're gonna go ahead and increase this all the way to the max. We're generating 357% heat above 100%. We're generating 12,500 megawatts of power. It's gonna take 24 seconds to eat one of these reactor cores. And then as you can tell, this thing is quickly increasing. Let me go ahead and show you what it looks like when you're eating this many. So keep in mind, this is just one reactor. We can have up to five reactors. And then once it's finished eating that, there it is. There is your spent case, advanced reactor casing. Let me go ahead and I'm gonna make this so this is slower here. So you might be asking, well, what happens if I just leave it at this high temperature? Look at that, 357%. Let me go ahead and show you what this looks like and how it 
notifies you when you're getting too hot. All right, we're already in the red zone here and we're about to be notified. Oh, by the way, let's see how much water and coolant we're going through. 58 consumption, 80 consumption, and we're not generating steam right now. So, all right, this thing's about to shut down because we're about to max out on heat. So here we go, ready? Look at that. All right, so we shut down power. We've overheated. Everything's come to a complete stop and it's going to take a very long time for this thing to cool down. So let's go ahead and put every, let's reset this back to zero. We cannot start it right now until this cools off. We're gonna go ahead and put some shielding on and some reactor cooling so it cools down faster because otherwise it's going to take a long time so here's our cooling we're going to put it directly on the reactor chambers here okay so this is reactor chamber we went ahead and put our cooling down and then we're going to do reactor shielding see how fast that's cooling down now that we did that and I'm gonna do Mark III shielding because it cools down the quickest. So right now we're just gonna play the waiting game. If you wanted to, you could start it right now since it's cold. All right, reactor is cooled down. So we're gonna go ahead and put this back up to start. And then we're gonna go ahead and Oh wait, we can't charge just yet because we don't have power. So we got to reconnect power here. And I failed horribly. Let's try that again. All right, we have power. Coils are still locked in position. Got to wait for the power to be recognized here. And then once that happens, we can go ahead and start it up. Gotta do that. There we go. All right, charge the reactor. All right, we're good. Start her up. In the next episode, we will focus on steam generation, manually shutting down the reactor, and balancing steam and temperature generation. I appreciate you for watching this video. I'll see you in the next episode.